uh, hi good evening and uh, thanks for watching this video so uh, today is um, Thursday July 19th uh, 2018 and we're here back at the uh, social room in Hong Kong at the East Point Center so um, I have a few afterthoughts and I actually have a few addendum to add regarding the um, the RX100 series and uh, still I don't have the opportunity to really test the camera you know especially in this uh, public domain but uh, but uh, well basically uh, some more complaints unfortunately and, and we really need to be critical when looking at cameras like these because uh, uh, usability is, uh, is one concern and uh, it's not just about taking good pictures but also the um, the general usage uh, like experience and it seems as only it's not not quite delivering that so I'm gonna show you a couple things so so uh, now you see here uh, the display here on the uh, RX100 uh, Mark 6 so I have turned on the histogram and already you can see the histogram size is really small well that's typical Sony style and uh, that's not really good but the problem of course is that while this is a real life histogram uh, you cannot activate the histogram when do you're doing exposure shift like this and the only way you can do exposure shift is to press a button and then everything is gone and you get this stupid scale here and it's actually quite easy to fix you know uh, for Sony to fix and uh, which is whenever you uh, you do the exposure shift uh, while uh, pushing this uh, uh, GB button there should be a, an expanded histogram display somewhere which also should uh, uh, reflect the changes during exposure shift and it's actually quite easy to do. Nikon has done that uh, in some of the uh, combat cameras and uh, that's no problem and I really think Sony should do that and uh, the display of uh, histogram under the exposure compensation operation like this should be uh, compulsory and I have also uh, uh, try the manual settings and whatever, trying to do an easy exposure compensation and it simply doesn't work. And uh, in previous units, you can actually assign the uh, EV shift uh, on the dial, but still the uh, histogram will be gone and instead you get this big dial setting with the EV thing. That's really stupid. So, so that's probably, this, this is not progress, it's backtracking. Oh. One thing I'm going to show you, the other thing here. Now see the labeling here, it says uh, XMO RS 4K Cybershot, but there's no mention of uh, the AVCHD progressive mode, or just AVCHD. So this is a Mark 5 here, excuse me, Mark 6 here, the Mark 5, same, but the Mark 4, as you can see here, is it Mark 4? Uh, you know what? No, it's Mark 3. Okay, so the Mark 3, you can see the AVC uh, HD. And yes, it's uh, AVC HD progressive compatible. So, uh, so, but this one is also AVC HD uh, progressive compatible. That's the uh, Mark 4 here. This is the last uh, model that is compatible with AVC HD in progressive mode. So, uh, so starting from the M5 and the M6, uh, we are running into the problems with not having ABC HD uh, progressive again. And the same thing goes to the RX10 Mark IV and also the uh, the uh, the uh, the ASM uh, Mark III. Now I'm not sure if uh, the the uh, A6500, the 6300 would uh, have the same effects, but those are the earlier models, so. Uh, I believe those are still uh, AB60 are progressive compatible. So, now, we talk about progress here. So, I would say not, not every progress is good. And I want to show you the positive side of progress. So, now here, with the pop-up viewfinder here, and the pop-up viewfinder on the, the Mark 5 here. So, uh, okay, I'm not talking about the, uh, the dot resolution on, on, and the magnification. You, you're not going to expect good magnification on these. I've tried this before and I don't quite like it. But, as you can see here on the Mark 6, only on the Mark 6 from the uh, 100 series, 
as well as the uh, RS1 now. You get a one touch pop up viewfinder. So I'm gonna show you. So basically, it's not only linked to the power, power uh, switch, but you see the spring loaded uh, eyepiece here. And, when, and you can actually do a, a, a push and uh, you just uh, just hide the UEF. So this would be the preferred design on the pop-up UEF, but in the past, on the previous generations, uh, say the Mark 5 here, you see, it's a um, two-pronged thing. So you pop it out and you have to manually pull out the eyepiece. And I have to say, this eyepiece is not really sturdy because when you actually use this viewfinder, you have the tendency to actually accidentally push this back, uh, the uh, the eyepiece, and uh, you're not going to be able to, to see anything. And if you wear spectacles, it's going to be really, really worse. So with these kind of two-prong design, it's very likely, I would say 99% likely, that the eyepiece here is going to be accidentally pushed back in. So that's not good. So I would say that's progress, and with the Mark 6, you get this uh, automatic, basically everyone automatic. So, so even if your your eyeglasses push push the um, accidentally pushes the uh, the eyepiece is going to uh, bounce right back. And then of course the uh, the adapter set the adapter settings here. So, so but beyond that, what what more can we expect? Well, it's hard to say. But you see the size. There's a size problem with the uh, 100, uh, the RX 100 series. It's too small. It's too, too small. And too small, a camera means uh, not easy operation. That's for one. And then of course with the one and one inch sensor, and then with a smaller mass, you're going to run into a heat sinking problem. So maybe a little larger body might um, might uh, provide some advantage. And then of course the other thing about compactness is ease of losing. And I've heard uh, already uh, uh, um, uh, testimonies of people having lost cameras like these in overseas travel and that's really ugly because well, just look at the price, 10k. That's what 10k is, what, around 1300? 1300 US for full camera and you lose it during travel, that's, that's not very good. I mean, you're not losing just the camera but you're losing all the memories, the data, the pictures that you've taken and those are hard to retrieve. So then I'm gonna pick up the camera and erase all those uh, all those pictures. You know, these days people are mean uh, those uh, crooks are re irresponsible and they steal something and just erase everything. But I'm not going to put that into discussion here. So, um, so I have held the camera and I can see the advantage of this grip here, this rubber grip here. But that's that's about it. You can see the grip should have and could have extended downwards but that means the camera body should also uh, have been uh, enlarged and now I'm comparing this against uh, my Canon S120 it's even shorter than the S120 I would say it should be a little bit bigger than the S120 and uh, yes it's thick this kind of thickness is expected especially with the multi-folding lens barrel here now a multi-folding lens, lens barrel means you can uh, uh, stuff a, a decent lens. This is a, again it's 24 to 200, uh, 2.8 to 4.5. It's decent, but when you protrude this, you're gonna run into problems. You know, with a uh, common camera like these going on travel spree. So any move, any shock on on the lens barrel might uh, would would render the uh, lens zoom lens mechanism failure and. That's one of the problems Ken was, uh, has been experiencing in uh, some of its uh, early incarnation power shot series like the uh, I think S90, S100 and S110. Not quite on the S120 though, but still, this can be ugly. You know, you, know, you think you have uh, some kind of super zoom thing and uh, you're going to lose out to the, uh, the overall durability and of course you're losing speed at the tail side because you only get 4.5 aperture 4.5 is not enough and I already s uh, said that I would at least expect an F4 so so what else should I uh, be saying well well not much here so now why would I say I advocate uh, uh, a larger body because a larger body means a large screen I would say 
I wouldn't say an inch longer, should be half, half an, in, an inch longer, maybe half an inch uh, wider. And uh, of course the, um, the molded grip here could have been made of um, better materials. This is an imp improvement and of course the pop-up you'll find it is also an improvement. But beyond that, I would say, you know, maybe it's more viable to just let go of the uh, pop-up viewfinder and instead have a, a, a hot shoe for accessories like uh, uh, an audio mic, whatever. Oh, by the way, speaking of audio mic, I don't think this camera, this guy here has audio input and that's another problem. It's like, it's, it's another hindrance when you attempt to do uh, a video. So, it's not good. I would say audio input is uh, uh, necessary. If you have better audio output, audio output jack, but uh, that's up to Sony to uh, decide. But I would say the pop-up viewfinder, it might be a fun to use. It's not a real fun. It takes too much space for a small camera, and I would rather see something like the uh, the DSCV one uh, many years ago, where you get you got a larger body, no viewfinder, but you get an accessory hot shoe. So you can attach uh, a, a, a standard hot shoe flash uh, for uh, more creative fl uh, and uh, powerful flash control. But this, what are we having here? Just a small flash here. I don't know if it's tootable so you can do a uh, bounce flash, but uh, it's definitely really, really weak. So the weak and cheesy. And uh, and then of course uh, I tried out the man menu system. It's still very cluttered. It might be a little bit different. I wouldn't say the improvements. So so again, so that's the problem. So so I'm going to ask Sony to rethink really about not just implementing the ABC, uh, the XABCS 4K capability, but also to retain previous. Uh, uh, ABC HD progressive uh, shooting mode so that people would, uh, for whatever reason, need to stick to ABC HD, get the 50p or 60p, uh, 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 28 uh, Mbps uh, quality mode. And that would be great. <coughs> you know, I'm pretty sure they, that, that, I'm pretty sure that the, the sensors could handle all the, the video stuff like this. It's just up to Sony to unlock the uh, capabilities on um, a camera like this. But of course, uh, other design problems, I'm not going to repeat those uh, further. But uh, it seems that at current state, uh, Sony is still able to attract a bunch of, uh, I wouldn't say imbecilic customers, but yes, uh, stupid customers who actually get uh, attracted to uh, a problematic hardware like these. And uh, and I really hate to say that. So so at least uh, at this stage you still have the opportunity to get older hardware. So with older older models you can still get uh, some of the functions that uh, uh, you might need. Say AV6 progressive, but uh, again uh, that's not supposed to be like this. Oh, one more thing here. So I have shown you folks the. Uh, improved uh, pop-up uh, viewfinder design so I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that with the uh, the improved uh, RX100 Mark 5A I'm sure I'm sure Sony is going to put in the updated hardware not just the firmware so so instead of uh, being a, 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 a another model with so-called paid firmware hard, 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 uh, upgrade but it's not just paid firmware hardware I mean upgrade but it's a combination of uh, firmware and hardware upgrade and that makes a, a new camera of course you know if you have gotten a, the, the previous M5 then I'm sorry well you'll have to pray for at least a, a firmware upgrade but you're not going to get any uh, uh, hardware improvements so I wouldn't say Sony being slick but uh, it's a natural evolution it could be a good thing though so so just looking at the uh, the RX10 Mark II here and um, like I said, I'd really like to see the Mark II having a Mark II A evolution. So, so all the improvements from say the Mark IV or whatever, say AX, ASIC processors or whatever, uh, chipset or whatever, would be uh, integrated to the uh, this uh, more compact model with 24 to 200 uh, mil 2.8 lens. 
which some people would still uh, uh, prefer over the 24 to 600. So, so we'll see. So uh, I guess uh, that's it for uh, this little uh, uh, addendum for the uh, the RX100 series. So uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, I know the video is a little bit jittery and uh, and uh, people are walking around, but uh, well, what can I do? So I will be back with uh, more uh, on uh, 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 camera hardware should the opportunity be, uh, be made to me and I'm going to investigate more so I uh, hope you find the uh, extra information useful and I really hope that uh, the other online media would be aware of the problems that they never got to uh, report on regarding uh, the shooting modes and whatever so we'll see so in the meantime thanks for watching and uh, have a great evening and stay tuned for more